Fans are the greatest people in the world. Folks, it's Bob's. Right before New 52, this gem of a Batman story arc, which really, it's several story arcs that thread together to be one big story arc. I know many people have heard about the story because of a, a trade paperback graphic novel, Black Mirror, but it's technically several little stories that thread together from issues 871 to 881. Then when 881 ends, that's where New, New 52 begins. So Scott Snyder's first Batman work, 871, part one of Black Mirror. I'm going to give you a lot of setup and bounce around a little bit, but I also don't want to dive into spoilers and ruin anything because I have to be honest, this is one of those that is that good, that actually delivers in a way I think you'll enjoy. Even if you're not a massive Batman fan, I think you're going to be all right with this one. So the setup is um, Batman had been thought dead. Batman has returned. This is Dick Grayson as Batman. Damian Wayne is Robin, who's not really in this sequence. And then Tim Drake is out there. He's he's adopted what's called the Red Robin persona. If you're not familiar with that, Tim Drake is Red Robin. And then uh, this is a really very heavy centric um, Gordon story. So like the second the second part of this story. So it's ten issues. Like I said, each piece is still a different different thing. So we have a quick little sequence that I'm not sure we totally get right away. And bear with it as it sort of plays out into this graphic sort of killer croc attack story, basically. And we get more of this explained later on. And you have a little bit of the backstory with Alfred and, and Gordon. And basically there is, um, this is really, truly a detective story. Like it is so refreshing to have a Batman detective comic book be about detective work and not some sort of side drama or side um psychological analysis of Batman, anything like that. This is just a detective story. And it goes through a couple of different story arcs here where he's Batman's basically investigating one sequence leads to another sequence, which leads to another sequence. And each time there are little clues and little things along the way that make you pick up the pieces. And so you're, there's a little hat tip. We mentioned killer croc here. We see a little hat tip towards Mad Hatter. And I'm not going to spoil exactly where we go with this, but I wanted you to just know that it it delivers. Um, and it's not not often that it delivers. Uh, Jock does the art. This is a very strange cover. I, I, I really was kind of like, I don't know what to think about the cover. Obviously, the crowbar imagery takes us right back to Joker's execution of Jason Todd, which happened uh, in the 80s. Um. All I can just say is that it does tie in and you end up with this incredible journey and drama and investigation that involves all the characters that we enjoy. And we really put sort of a Dick Grayson footprint on Batman, what, how his Batman is different, how his Batman would approach things differently, the different relationships and dynamics and the int introduction of this character. So that's what the first three issues technically are. It's called Black Mirror. Now, there's a little bit of setup when we do change artists. So this is Francesco uh, Francavilla. He takes over and does some art. I don't enjoy his art nearly as much. Um, and we get the second element to this sequence. And this is Gordon and his son, James. So James Jr. So James Gordon Jr. returns to Gotham. Now, there's a lots of backstory here. Is he mentally ill or not? What are his struggles? What does he overcome? Why is he back? All these elements kind of play in issue after issue, dealing with this from Gordon's point of view, flashing back to the childhood of like he's just a weird kid. Um, and then, of course, the Batman part of like, how is Batman going to deal with all this? So that's what all of this is, is sort of like tying and interweaving all of that together as well. We keep moving through the story arc. Again, we have several issues here. Hungry City. So Hungry City is just a little name. We have this little story here, this little thing here. We end up with uh, kind of, I don't want to say a filler issue, because we definitely are still within the same vein of what's been going on. And you have this Orca story and what 
Batman is uncovering, why he's uncovering it, working with Gordon, all those kinds of things, and how that could possibly thread and point to other things, which leads us down this road to part two, and then ultimately culminates with just a fantastic uh, issue number three. I Wow, Hunger City 3 is really great, because it kind of takes you on that journey before we kind of get right back to Skeleton Key. And here again, James Jr. in the background. And we end up with our three story arc issues that kind of wrap things up. And this is one of those iconic covers that you see with this Joker face. And again, not spoiling del- del- elements. What I can tell you is this, you have different sort of like chapters within this 10 issue sequence. Well, you get the original issues, you check down the trade yourself. I think this really does deliver all the detective elements, all of the Batman elements. And it really does make you realize that Dick Grayson makes a good Batman. It's not bogged down with his relationship with Robin. It doesn't bog down with his relationship with Tim or anything like that. It's a Batman story. It's a Batman detective story. Gordon definitely shines. Barbara has some great elements and moments in it as well. I think you'll enjoy something that is a little bit different and off the beaten path than even the Batman stories that I have praised in the past or that I really love from like the nineties. It's obviously more contemporary again. It, it, and it completely ends like after the next issue, which is 881, that's where new 52 begins. So when you, um, if you, if you were to keep pr- pr- proceeding, you have the finale here with the uh, 881 and then the next story, of course, it will jump to rebirth because in between we end up having new 52 that's why it says 934 so those 50 plus issues in between is the new 52 so um snyder definitely earned his place in the batman lore he gained him the title to do the new new 52 i think he took on the batman title and he began there with the famous court of owl story arc which i probably need to do a video just on that as well um, but it's fun to kind of i think give you something from the past that i think is fun enjoyable and different um, so feel free to check out the link. I do different playlists in there. So you have different by titles and comic books as a whole or different things like that. So, and let me know what you think I should kind of spend some time with shout out to left eye ego. He kind of put this on my radar screen a while ago. I remember reading it. Didn't read it in order. I think was the problem and why it didn't really have such an impact on me. Like it is the, during this read through, which I would recommend if you can try to do it, do it that way. Anyway, thanks for listening everybody. I am pops. Take care. Right? And I'm not playing.